Hey there. So in this video, we're going to take a look at an object connected to a spring uh, moving from the position seen here on the left, so some maximum position of compression on the left, all the way out through equilibrium to the maximum position on the right. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can draw a graph of potential energy versus position for this situation. And this process here is something, it's a, a skill that's important to us in AP Physics C. We want to be able to create graphs of potential energy versus position. And if we have a graph, we want to be able to interpret it to be able to talk about force. So that's what we're going to do in this video here for this um, elastic potential energy of this mass spring system. And so if you remember a little bit of information about elastic potential energy, you will remember that an, a, uh, a system has elastic potential energy when we have something like a spring or something stretchy that is stretched or compressed. So our system starts off here with elastic potential energy. Okay, so we would have a maximum amount of elastic potential energy here equal to one half kx squared or the spring constant times that displacement or that x value squared and as this the mass moves from that maximum compressed position toward the equilibrium position the amount of elastic potential energy in this system is decreasing so the less stretch or the less compression we have in that spring the less potential energy our system is going to have so we are going to start our graph off somewhere over in this area over here because we're starting off with our greatest amount of elastic potential energy that we can have but we are to the left of that equilibrium position so we're starting over here to the left of our y-axis at negative x max and by the time we get to that equilibrium position, so once our, our mass is right here, all of that elastic potential energy is gone. It's been converted into kinetic energy. So we're going to start at this point here and head toward that equilibrium point. But we have to think a little bit about uh, the slope of our graph as we go from this point to that point. Should it be a straight line of constant slope? Should it have a curve to it? And if it is curved, which way should it curve? Concave up or concave down? And so to answer that question, we're going to think about the magnitude of the spring force as our mass moves from this maximum position toward the equilibrium position. And we have a linear spring here. We're going to think back to Hooke's law, okay? And the magnitude of the force as being equal to that spring constant times the displacement. So Hooke's law tells us that the spring force is proportional to the displacement, meaning that the more this spring is stretched or compressed, the greater that force is going to be. So as the mass moves from the position here to equilibrium, that spring force is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And at x equals zero, that spring force is equal to zero as well. So the way that force connects to the shape of our potential versus position, potential energy versus position graph is that the force tells us what the slope of this graph is like. The force, in fact, is the derivative of potential energy with respect to position. So we want to, if we're describing the force, think of that as a way of describing the slope of our graph. So as the object moves toward equilibrium, our force is decreasing, okay? So we're heading toward from this point to this point with a decreasing slope or a slope that is getting less steep. So to draw a slope that's getting less steep, we're going to draw a concave up slope, okay? So we have kind of half a parabola here. 
And to draw the second half of our graph, we're going to look at what's going on from the equilibrium position to the maximum position on the other side. And again, we're going to think about this in terms of the energy change, but also in terms of the force so that we can get the correct idea for whether our energy is increasing or decreasing. But what is the rate of increase or decrease like? So as we move from equilibrium to the right, the elastic potential energy is increasing because once we reach that other maximum position, we're going to have that maximum amount of elastic potential energy again. So at this point here and this point here, we have the most elastic potential energy that our system can have and no kinetic energy at either of those points. So the elastic potential energy here and here is equal to the total mechanical energy of this system, assuming that we do not have any friction forces acting between the block and the surface. So again, as we moved from the equilibrium position to the maximum on the right, the force, because our, our displacement is getting larger and larger, the force is getting larger and larger as well. So we have a force that is increasing in magnitude, we have a potential energy that is increasing in magnitude. So we are going to reach the same position on the other side, the same amount of elastic potential energy on the other side. Let me just try to kind of make sure my dots are equal here, just about. And we're going to draw again this curve that's concave up. Whoops, that's not perfect, but that's okay. We have here an increasing slope or a slope that's getting more steep with time. So this graph here would represent the uh, potential energy change as we head from this negative x max to positive x max. And that's just the potential energy as we move through that position change. So we can also talk about here the kinetic energy as well. So I'm going to add to this graph on the y-axis the kinetic energy in, in this other color here. So as our elastic potential energy is decreasing, our object is heading toward equilibrium and our kinetic energy then is increasing. We have a force that is pulling in the direction of motion. So our kinetic energy is going up and at any one point in time, the system has this same amount of total of, of mechanical energy. And that mechanical energy, for anybody who, who needs a little bit re of review on that, is the combination of any potential energy that we have in our system. So that could be gravitational potential, elastic potential, plus any kinetic energy. And if this system does not have any friction force acting on it. Again, our total mechanical energy is staying the same. So our combination of elastic potential and kinetic energy is the same. So I'm going to graph the kinetic energy. Oops, let's do that a little bit better there. As the inverse here of that potential energy. Just to indicate again that if, if I picked any point here and I wanted to add the kinetic energy to the potential energy, those would add up to give me this total amount. And mathematically, I can write that as this elastic potential energy that I start with. Okay, so that would be at the maximum position where we could calculate that as one half kx max squared is equal to the elastic potential energy for any value of x plus one half mv squared. So if we knew the constant, if we knew that maximum position, mass, we could find the velocity at any, any position along this motion. So that's something that we could actually do with knowing that piece of information. All right, guys, so I'm going to wrap this up here just to leave you with uh, a strategy here for kind of thinking through how we can draw a graph of potential energy versus position 
and make sure that we're thinking about our slope as the force that's being exerted on the system, but also considering when we might have more uh, potential energy or less potential energy and how that contributes to the total mechanical energy of our system and the kinetic energy as well.